Hi, my name is Julio Sosa. I'm here to talk about the Fujifilm X-T1 IR. The Fujifilm X-T1 IR is a full spectrum camera that's been developed to help law enforcement and medical examiners in crime scene and forensic applications. The camera has a range of 385 nanometers in the ultraviolet and 1,000 nanometers in the near infrared. Now, I've taken the camera and I've actually mounted and tested it with a crime scope and with using a quartz lens, I can tell you that we've been able to reach as low as 350 nanometers in the ultraviolet and as high as 1100 nanometers in the near infrared. This obviously makes it an advantage when shooting crime scenes and autopsies, gross anatomy, and many other aspects of the forensic applications. Now with any evidence collection, it's important to know that you should follow a few protocols. And the first one is to make sure that the camera is set up at a 90 degree angle. You want a straight on picture when you're taking a picture of any type of trace, trace evidence, evidence collection, uh, and what you don't want is a distortion when you're taking the picture that might be challenged in court. And the other thing to note is lighting. Lighting, although we use different types of lighting, it's also important where the lighting sets. In this case, I'll tend to shoot and have the lighting set to 45 degrees to make sure that we're taking advantage of any ridge or any type of disruption in the materials so the camera can take full advantage of capturing that information. Now the camera takes advantage of the full spectrum sensor by allowing it to capture all the wavelengths that are coming into it. Now where you, the photographer, has to decide is okay, what is it that I want to draw back so that I can see the specific powder, blood, or burn mark that we're taking a picture of. To be able to do that, you're going to need to use a filter array. And what I mean by that is that you're going to be taking various filters, like this one that I'm holding here in my hand. Uh, and what it does is that it cuts back on wavelengths and only allows the wavelengths that I want to see coming through the camera. Now, where the sensor takes advantages of it is that it receives that information and illustrates it through a live view so I can determine if what I'm seeing is what I want to capture. Now one of the things I'm really excited about to talk to you today is the EVF. And the reason why I mention the EVF specifically is because when you have to shoot blood, blood spatter, or any trace evidence, especially on dark clothing, this is where the EVF takes advantage. Because by me taking the very same filter with the same approach we use with GSR and gunshot, I can actually place this over the lens and looking through the EVF or even the LC display, I can see the blood immediately with the contrast of the dark clothing. So a black piece of cloth immediately turns gray and the blood turns dark immediately showing the contrast and being able to take advantage of it. Another point that I want to make is the autofocus. And this is something that most people don't know about, but you can actually focus with the cut filter on the lens itself and still see it through the EVF. And that to me is absolutely neat when it comes to these things. Now, it's important to note that when you're going to be shooting any type of evidence, you should be using a macro lens. Right now I have a 60 millimeter mounted on it, and it definitely needs to be at 90 degrees like I'm going to show you right now. Now when shooting GSR, it's important to note that you really should use an array of filters. In my case, I use four filters. Each of them have a specific wavelength that the camera captures. Now the reason why I go through this trouble to go ahead and use four filters as opposed to one is because different materials offer different reflections and different radiations and each filter will take advantage of that. The other thing to note is lighting. Uh, for clothing or anything that irradiates heat that's going to go up into the camera, in my case I, lo I love using an incandescent light because it offers the best choice for that. And there's also IR illuminators that can help assist that have specific wavelengths. So in this case I'm going to go ahead and use an 850 nanometer filter because I know that that tends to be my go-to when I'm looking for gunshot residue and when I'm trying to photograph uh, any type of trace materials that I'm looking for. So as you can see we're all set up to shoot up our GSR. I've got my four cut filters that I'm going to be using. So the first filter I'm going to be grabbing is the filter that cuts at 850 nanometers. And one of the things that you're going to notice and you're really going to love about this camera is that I can actually place the cut filter over the lens and I can immediately see what I'm getting. As you're seeing here in this sample, we can already see the GSR 
on the LCD, and you also see it on the EVF, so you're seeing a live view of what you're ending up with. But here's where it gets even better. I can actually come in here, and with the fo focus detection, it locks on. While the filter's on, I take my exposure, and that was the extent of me being able to take a GSR photograph. Now, another tool that you can do and use is your ABFO marker. This is probably one of the most important tools you're going to be using and something that you can take advantage of with the Fujifilm camera. Let's say that you're taking a picture of a dark piece of clothing and for whatever reason the camera can't lock in. By you laying down your marker, you're taking advantage of several things. One, the camera has something to lock into and you're able to get a tight focus. Two, if you notice your marker, there's an 18% gray and there's a calibrated white. This is very important in post-processing and I really encourage you to use it. Now fraudulent documents or obliteration, however you term it, involves a lot of process. Where UV or ultraviolet IR offers advantages is that many of the processes that were previously used, especially with samples like wash checks or altered checks, would sometimes damage the actual evidence and that's the last thing we want to do. Now imagine if I just take the Fujifilm UV IR camera and I apply a filter on it and then with this very same filter, whether it's an 850 or a 1000, there are four that we like to use when we're shooting this, we're able to take away and actually show the difference in ink, the type of ink that was used, or maybe it was an older ink and we're able to detect the differences. This is some of the things that we're going to show you in the examples and the demos that are coming up. So one of the advantages that the Fujifilm X-T1 IR offers is that if I use an IR illuminator because I want to show subtle changes in fraudulent documents, I can actually illuminate it and in this case I'm using an 850 nanometer illuminator and right away I can see that the document's been altered. But here's the best part, as I go changing the power and the energy of the light, you can see the altered document being distracted or stripped away, if you will, and you can clearly see the $10 of the original check. So this offers very many advantages when you're capturing or collecting evidence. Now fingerprint latents is a wide area that is covered a lot, and now there's a lot of skilled fingerprint latent photographers that do their job diligently every day for hours and hours and hours. Now imagine if we can find a way to help them along the process and be able to reduce the time that they're able to take advantage and be able to use the images whether you're using APHIS or any type of data management to retrieve information. So I just wanted to make a brief mention. Let's say for example we lift the print off this glass here and we go ahead and we take our lift tape and we put it on the card. Well let's say for whatever example that it's on an object that we can't see and we need to lift it off that object. ALS, off, offers, ALS offers an important tool in being able to excite and view that latent. Where the Fujifilm camera takes advantage of is that because it is a full spectrum camera and because it does have the X-Trans sensor, it's able to see a lot more information a lot faster. We hope the sneak peek we gave you for the Fujifilm X-T1 IR was insightful. For more information, go to fujifilmforensics.com.